Amen. Uh, welcome, everybody. We look, we got a full house today. Thank you. All right, my, my deacon over there, Mr. Elam, you got count, Deke? We good? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. To God be the glory again. Um, it is Grandparents Day, and happy Grandparents Day to everyone. And uh, we excited. You know, we, we, we need our grandparents in the picture yes. when it comes down to raising them children, right? right, right. Amen. We need a whole lot of help because uh, even when the adults have... Uh, gotten to the place where they think they're adults. We think we grown. We still miss the mark a whole lot, right? Amen. And we need our mamas and our daddies to step in there. So we thank God again for having our grandparents and there being this national day to honor grandparents. So again, to God be the glory and happy Grandparents Day to yeah. you all. Um, this is going to be part two of uh, the legacy of grandparents. And let me just start off before I even say my prayer, because I don't want to miss saying this. Um, one of my ministers this morning, he, he helped me. I, I got on one track, and I stayed on that track, and I didn't really come off it like I wanted to, to just go into some other areas yeah. of what it is to have a grandparent in your life. So before I go too far, we appreciate you grandparents. We truly appreciate our grandparents. Yeah. If it were not for you, the rearing of children as we know it to be would not be happening. So we thank God that you have been there to step in to help us and not turn away. Even if you wanted to knock us out, you stayed the course and you kept us the children that helped us to grow up at the same time. So we do honor you on today. Father God, in the name of your precious son, Jesus, Lord God, we bless you and we thank you, Lord, for truly, if it were not for you, Father, in your word, we wouldn't even know how to operate anyway. So we thank you, God. We thank you, Lord God, for your examples of the, of what we are supposed to do that are in the scriptures, Father, so that we don't have an excuse as to how we operate. So we give you the glory. We give you the honor, Lord God, as we talk about some things on today, Lord God, when it comes down to being a grandparent. What not our expectation is on this earth, Lord God, but what your word declares we ought Amen. to do, Father. Amen. Because that's more important. There's nothing that I can say that your word won't do, Father. So I thank you, God. I ask that you use this vessel, Lord God. Decrease Sharon and increase you, Lord God, that everything that comes out of my mouth will represent your your glory father in the name of Jesus and that your people would be edified father and the very devil that seeks to steal kill and destroy would be horrified in Jesus precious and righteous name Lord God and I thank you Lord God for our, our reverend evangelist uh, Usher Diane Black Lord God and helping us and sister Nisi Lord God and different ones that have helped to get this porch Lord God full on today we thank you Lord God we thank you for each person that's faithful father to coming out here to the Ransom St. Louis uh, congregation, Father. In the name of Jesus, we bless you, we honor you, we adore you. In Jesus' precious and righteous name, we say amen. 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 To God Thank be all Jesus. the glory. Again, we are talking about the legacy of grandparents. Glory be to God. Now, I started off this morning with sharing the fact that I had a situation with grandparents. I didn't have, well, I had grandparents, of course, because I had a mama. So somewhere there were some people that, you know, Amen. responsible for her. But by the time I came along, all but one of them had gone on to glory. And, uh, and then he died when I was 12. And, uh, and so in, in growing up in school and summer break and winter break come, and when you go back to school, they, all the children are talking about their summer vacation and their winter break and what they did on their trip to grandma's house and to grandpa's house. And tragically, I didn't have that experience. And it always bothered me because it sounded as if it was so much fun. Uh, the fun that I did have with my grandfather, my mother's father, who was Bishop Walter Alfred Sr., he was in Atlanta, Georgia. So 
we were far from him. But I remember going to places like Jamaica. He was over that conference area and just watching him. But, you know, for a child 12 years old, you just starting to think and know that you are alive and you you in between trying to figure out who you are and, and that you almost partially think you're grown at that time and don't want to be around adults anyway. So even what I potentially could have had from my grandpa, Walter, the distance between us was a bit much. And, and on top of that, all, all because of his being a bishop and all those things, the time frames that I had with him, not that anything's wrong with the church, but uh, it was a church. Right. Amen. So my experiences would have went like this in, in school. Sharon, what did you do over summer vacation? Oh, I sat in church all day long. I was with my one grand parent, my granddaddy, Bishop Walter Alford Sr., but all we did was go to church, amen? Uh, but to God be the glory, I thank God that I was in the church, amen? So not a bad testimony, but for children, we want to talk about being in the backyard. We want to talk about going to the beach. We want to talk about going into the stores. Now, I will tell you this. He had this grape orchard in his backyard. Oh my goodness, we would get sick as kids in that back picking up those grapes every time we finished running. Oh, we would, well, y'all know how that story would go. But that was one memory, and, and they tell me when I was younger, I would run around his chair and I would pop him in the head and say, Bebo, Bebo, I don't know what that meant. But that's the only memory I have of a grandparent. And so when I look at children and the experience that they have with their grandparents, it brings my heart joy. But I had to get over that, you yes, know? Yes. I had to come out of that place where I could rejoice, as the Bible says, in somebody else's pleasure. It wasn't always that way, amen? I kind of feel like I should be turned this direction, but y'all just work with me today. But I thank God that here I am today. I can appreciate the fact that in my prayers of the absence of having grandparents, God answered my prayer and allowed me to be a grandparent glory be to God and that was my prayer that father God I know the joy that children have when they have a grandparent and so Lord allow me the opportunity to spend time with my grandchildren and give them memories of being with their grandma and their grandpa because I know the missing link when you're sitting amongst your peers and you don't have anything to talk about it's like Christmas when everybody got the bike they wanted but you did amen you just in a place of wondering okay will it ever happen to me glory be to God but God has been kind to me and he's given me two grand boys and one grand girl and I thank God for them amen God is good and so I am appreciative to what our grandparents bring to the table amen and so what we're talking about today again here is the legacy of grandparents now I just happen to think that anything that God does that he's intentional about what he's doing it for why and and how it is supposed to operate and so I'm going to get into the story of what's happening with Timothy and his grandmother Lois because we need to recognize that we're not just here to take up Aaron's space amen there is something that we're supposed to do when it comes down to the legacy of our of grandparents amen? amen they're not supposed to just love on their children their grandchildren and give them everything they want because a spoiled child makes for uh, a lot of um correction by people that you would rather not be correcting your child when they're grown amen and so we are grateful today that we have the ability to to, to speak into our children and we know that based upon the word of God that we're supposed to do something more than make them happy. Amen. Right. So many people think that life is just filled with happiness. They tell me after uh, I, I've had my share of uh, failed marriage and they, they tell me if you go into it looking to be happy, you may as well not marry. Amen. And so um, having that experience, uh, um, you know, 
Uh, if you're looking for happiness all the time, it's just not going to happen. But when you do the right thing, right thing to stay in position, to make sure your your foundation is right, when happiness comes, it won't leave. Amen. And so I thank God that in the places of where things have not worked out quite the way I would have loved for them to work out, that I have been able to learn from those situations. So when I think about my relationship with my beautiful mom who's looking down on me, glory be to God, I thank God for the relationship that I had with her. I thank God for what I saw her do with my babies and their other grandparents and how they loved on them. But I did have some issues. Amen. My mother was one of those uh, grandparents that she did believe, and this was all predicated on her upbringing, because her mother died when she was six weeks old. And she had a, a, a stepmother. And things weren't necessarily the greatest. But she, So she ended up marrying young, and that's how I get to hit my... My classmates thought that my parents were my grandparents. And so um, and so what happened is that because of her own experiences, yeah. all she wanted to do was make them happy. Yeah. Amen. It did not matter if I told her, don't buy them those toy guns. I don't want my sons playing with no toy guns. Yeah. Seemed like the more I told her, don't get my children yeah. no toy guns, yeah. she went and found more. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And so I would share with her, well, look, 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 here's what, what we're going to do. If you don't stop doing what you're doing, they're not going to see you no more. And I knew of God, and I knew that every time they came from Grandma's house, like a drunk, I had to detoxicate them because they were so used to their toy guns, staying up all night, and everybody that knows me, if by 7, 7.30, if I'm in the house, I'm asleep. Well, that was the same train that my children were on. The lights were out wherever we were. It wasn't necessarily Georgia. And so this was how I operated with my children. And so the time did come because she continued to do what she wanted to do. And she was within her rights because she said, but in my house, I can do what I want to do. And I said, and you are absolutely right. So I'm just not going to bring them over anymore. Amen. And so I did. I did not take them over. I mean, there, if she was here today, she would say amen and not ouch because it's a true story. And so I had to deal with that thing because I love my mother. But I had to live with the consequences of whatever their behavior would be if they did not do what I needed them to do because grandma is in this ear telling them it's all right because what that does is it teaches them to be sneaky. I'm not, the, I, I'm not the mother nor the grandmother that does not discipline. Each one of, each and every one of my children, my son probably hates being here sometimes, but everybody has a story about being jacked up yeah. because there are certain things that I just do not allow, amen? And the reason being is because before I was even sold out on Jesus Christ, I still understood his reasoning behind what he would say. And in my house, for us and I, in my house, this was the way that we were going to go. Now, I tried to understand why she felt the way that she did, and I was okay. But I had to live with them. Amen. And so we had to come to a compromise. And so what I started doing is I would take them by her house, but I would say to them, do not take off your shoes. Because I knew before I got to the kitchen parts, we were going to be on our way out the door because she was going to start going to her closets and bringing out cases of stuff she's been buying since the last time she saw them. That's the grandmother they had. My One of my sons uh, has medical issues and I remember he was in the hospital for a, a year uh, dealing with leukemia and, and, and several other different things. And I remember and she had passed while he was in the hospital because she too had leukemia. But when we got out and we went to her house, her entire trunk was filled with everything that I would say don't buy. <laughs> but she would get 
because she was determined to let her grandbabies know her love. And that was all good. The problem was that, and I love her and I appreciate her. If it were not for her, I wouldn't be here. Because she did do what the scriptures say to raise up a child in the way that they should go. And when they grow older, it shall not depart. So she did her part to make sure that no matter how I operated, that eventually I would come back around. But there were some things that were going on in that time frame as children were growing up that I wanted to protect my babies from for as much as I could. Now, one of the things that she did was to make sure, and we're going to read this scripture in just a second here, to make sure that according to a legacy, when you read the, uh, the definition, in the, uh, <clears throat> let's put the glasses on. Merriam-Webster, it defines legacy as a gift by will, which is something in a D, last will and testament, especially of money or other personal property. It's a bequest. She or he leaves a legacy of million dollars. Or so we can have land, we can have articles, we can have money, whatever it is, it's something left for you by someone else, typically a family member. Number two says here, or something transmitted by or received from an ancestor, not even calling them a grandparent, but an ancestor or a predecessor, predecessor <coughs> from the past. Now here is what Second Timothy verse chapter one verses five and seven say. And I'm reading here from the King James Version. It reads, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in the grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded, this is Paul talking to Timothy, that in thee also, amen, wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of, of my hands, for God have not given us the spirit of fear, a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. This is what's happening in the life of Tim Timothy at this time because Paul recognizes that your grandmother has deposited something in you. And what she has deposited in you is something that no matter how bad the stock markets go down, you can't lose this. She has deposited faith in him. She has deposited the word of God in him. She has spoken truth into him. And so today, again, we're talking about the legacy of grandparents because too often we think about tangible things, amen? But what we need more than anything, especially now, is the word of God preached into our spirits, amen? It doesn't matter what's happening and the injustices that are happening. It doesn't matter what's happening with the with COVID-19. We you leave away from here, you go in somewhere, and it's called heaven or hell. What Grandma Lois was doing was making sure her baby made it into heaven. Amen? And that's what we need to do with our children. We think about doing all of these wonderful things that will make them what? Happy. Amen? We want to make them giggle and laugh and have all this excitement, but when a police roll up on them, they don't know how to operate because when Johnny Boy was kicking the dog, you thought it was cute. When Johnny Boy started kicking you, you said, don't do that. When Johnny Boy pulled his gun out, you're like, you can't do that. He said, why can't he? You didn't stop me in the beginning. Ooh. Amen. So what are we going to do? Hallelujah. What are we going to do? If we want change, we got to be the change. Glory be to God. And so when we think about the legacy of a grandparent, we have to think about something more than making them happy. Glory be to God. Because happiness is a feeling. It's fleeting. It comes and it goes. And when it's gone, then we are left with what? Nothing. Amen? And then we're worried. So I thank God for knowing that there is hope. Glory be to God. There is hope. Why is there hope? Because God has not called us back home yet. And for as long as we are here on the face of the earth with breath 
in our body, we have the opportunity to, opportunity to make it right. So if you have not recognized St. Louis Street, I am on a mission yeah. to bring grandmothers back in style. Glory be to God. I am on a mission to bring papas back into style on the days where if that child cut up, they gonna get cut up. Glory be to God. Amen. Because if you don't handle it now, somebody else gonna handle it later. Glory. So we have to make a decision. What legacy are we gonna leave for our grandbabies? Amen. What legacy are you even leaving for your children that they would even want to do the right thing? We wonder why our kids get, get grown and they tell, well, I'm grown. I can do what I want to do. You sure can as long as it's under another address. You do what you want to do. But it won't happen under the address that I pay mortgage for. Amen. Amen. It, well, you know, I mean, it is what it is. And we have to let our yay be yay and our nay be nay. Because that's what God expects of us. And so when we think about leaving a legacy, grandparents, we want to leave something that down throughout the generations, when people say, what did your mama and your daddy leave you? Did your grandparents leave you anything? You and I will be able to say, you know what? We may not have had much, but what we did have was a praying mama. Amen. A praying daddy, a praying grandparent, a, someone that took us to church. I may not have liked what I was doing when I was spending all of this time with my grandfather, the bishop, but who am I today? They told me bishop elect, amen? I was in a position where I didn't quite understand, but at the same time, because I was under holiness, amen, what was in that realm was falling off on me. Glory all be right. to God. All so right. what you are under, what is happening in your atmosphere what's happening in your environment is what's going to happen to you amen we have the choice to decide what we're going to deal with and we have to make the decision that gone are the days that children run a household the devil is a lie and the truth ain't nowhere in them because god has given us the authority he has said to us train them up in the way that they should go and when we do our part and our children do their part, then when the children start spending time with the grandparents, you're not on the phone a minute, grand, the, the parents are going saying, you better come get this child. Mm. Why do I need to come get this child? Because the child don't act right. And I'm too old to be chasing a kid and I ain't putting up my plans. I ain't put up my plans for my own child. I ain't putting up my plans for yours. <laughs> Amen. So if you want me to keep them, you better start teaching Johnny. You better start helping Susie because I'm not going to do nothing anymore than what I did for my own. Yeah. So if you want me to spend time with them, if you want them to be able to have some good stories to tell their, their, their classmates when they're talking about what they did at grandma and grandpa's house, you better send them straight. Because Amen. if you don't, I'll make them straight. Amen. Amen. Because there are things that are more important than making them happy. Glory be to God. So yes, we want children to experience great things in life. But there's more to these feelings. And we see here in Timothy's life that he has been given something that is so admired that Paul is telling him, there is no fear in you. So stir up the gift. Glory be to God. Stir it up. You are a man, mighty man of valor. A mighty man of war. You can move beyond where you are and do great things. Why? Because it's in you. Glory be to God. And what's in you, no amount of money can take it from you. Amen. They can try to. Amen. They can do things to make you afraid. But again, we are not a people of fear. We are courageous. Amen. God will fight the battle. We ain't even got to worry about lifting a finger. That's what the Bible say to me. So we have to remember that as we are spending time with our children and our grandchildren, that we remind them as Paul is reminding Timothy to stir up the gift. Don't be afraid. 
It's all right to do like they said with John Lewis, that to, to go into a good fight, you know? It's all right to do some things that's going to make a difference. But don't allow yourself, because you just want to feel good, to get in a place where you end up having to deal with things that you would have preferred not to. That somebody may have tried to help you with, but because of those that you think should care about you more did not, you struggle with good and evil. All because sexy g Mom is trying to dress like you. She's 70 and you seven. You can you looking at your outfit and she got on an outfit that looked no different than what you got on. Grandpa's britches are below his behind. Because he's trying to be like the grandson. Right. I wish you would. I... Come on now. Come on. Woo. Uh, all right. I'm the grandmother. I got to tell you, proceed with caution. Because right. I ain't been saved that long. Right. And I'm still under construction. Right. Amen? Amen. Some things just aren't going to happen. Right. And we have to stay the course with that. Yeah. Because we're doing what's right for them. That's what I believe God desires for us to do as grandparents. I don't think he, he intended for us to do it. Thank you, Jesus. If Jesus went to the cross so we would have the right to the tree of life, yes, why in the world are we going to let somebody wear their clothes that's supposed to fit on their waist below their butt tail? Amen. That's happening that day. I just think there's something wrong with that picture. And what bothers me even more is that when they showing their their underclothes, Mother Elam, it ain't even like them jokers been washed. <laughs> they dirty, yeah. they stink, right. and you think you cute. Okay. And the parents are sitting by, <laughs> look at him, meet me in the bathroom. <laughs> I told my sons, because all of them were taller than me. I have a back that's right there in that house there, in that room back there. It's about this size. I said, I don't care how tall you are, I will bust your kneecap open. Try me. Try me if you want. If I'm going to go to jail, it's going to be going to jail because I did what God said versus the fear you wanted me to put in, wanted to put in me so that if I didn't train them, you were going to shoot them and kill them. Glory be to God. Because that's what's happening. We are missing the mark trying to make somebody happy. And our children are being decimated. And, 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 and now we can't even go to the funerals and, and talk about what, oh, what they used to do anymore. It's time for a change. And so when we think about the legacy of a grandparent, if mama and daddy not going to stand up and do what needs to be done, we have got to bring grandparents back in style where they can pull that child to the side and say, boy, girl, if you don't pull it together, it's going to hurt me more than it hurts you, but you're going to appreciate it down the road. Trust me, because you're going you to see your friends up down a pathway because they thought that love was making them happy, and love is teaching you right yes. from wrong. We need our grandparents to come back in style. So I'm pleading today that grandparents of old would come back in style. I don't care what your child say. If they want you to be a part of that child's life, when they in your house, as my mama say, my daddy said, in my house, house. you're going to dance by my rules. Right. If I say jump, the response is going to be how high. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's just the way T.I. is, I was told. I got one beating, one slap in the face, one tooth knocked out. Gee, I'm child, I'm a quick learner. I'm not into pain. That's not what I do. So I learned real quick. My mother walked out of the pulpit with her robe on. Got me out of where I was sitting. Took me out on that outside that side door. And the rest is history. I don't believe. I don't remember anything else. 
I don't remember anything else. But I know what didn't happen anymore. I didn't move in church. Amen. If she said sit there and don't move, sit there and don't move. You can sit in front of a TV all day long and not even eat. You can't sit for an hour in church. I lift you up out of here. What do you mean? You can wake up. What we do, Mama C, we wake you up. We wake you up, don't we, baby? We wake you up. Go to bed if you want to sleep. All right, amen? Because that is what has to happen. Because we're losing our children. Because when grandparents used to, used to do, well, the, and, and I know a lot of my family, the grandparents ended up raising the children anyway. Yeah. Amen? Oh, we were so close together, different ones housed, that, you know, that's just how it was anyway. Yeah. But people get, they, they, they get grown and they go to the city, and all of a sudden they think they have arrived. You know, I don't need you no more. You know, one of the the, the, the worst uh, stories that or, or things that I've ever heard is when Shirley Caesar talks about her son and 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 how you know the wife didn't want her, her there at the house. You know, um, that that's an awful feeling when you've taken care of your child and then the, the one that the little boy wants to charge her a nickel and a dime for taking out the trash. Dude, you ate those pancakes, you better take that pancake trash to the trash can. I'm sorry, if you can't take it, I'm gonna help you take it. That's how we gonna do this. You gonna figure it out one way or the other because we're forgetting that the word of God says train up a child. The word train means that some action has to be put into something. Amen. It does not mean that every time I lift my voice that something's just going to automatically happen. Every now and then you got to, you know, when the tire gets flat and you got to put the thing up under there, you got to lift it, jack, you got to jack it on up. You got to jack it on. <laughs> you got to jack that person right on up to help them out. And so we have to allow grandparents and recognize the wisdom that you all have. Recognize that you've been through everything that we would think to go through. I tell my kids now, you know, they're like, oh, I, I remember now, now what you were saying. Yeah, because you got a little bit of experience yeah. on you. That's but right. I'm trying to help you before you have to go through the experience. You know, but I recognize sometimes you just want to go through some stuff that you want to go through. It's all good. All right, you do you. All right, Proverbs 13, chapter 13, verse 22 says, King James Version as well. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Mm. Amen. So we've talked about the legacy. We've talked about it being land. We've talked about it being money. We've talked about the different forms of what a legacy can look like when it comes down to parents, ancestors leaving for their children. And here, what we're reading in Proverbs, their children's children. Amen. And so what we hear here is that if, if the word of Lois goes into your spirit, and it helps to correct the crooked places in your life whereby you're able to do the right thing. You're able to make the right choices in your life. Don't you know that obedience is better than sacrifice? Amen. That when you run short on some things that you might need a few dollars for, this scripture text says here that the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Don't you know God's name is on the line for you? Ooh. That when you yes. run short, yes. he's going to run high yes. because his word, his name is on the line for you and I. He's going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. And so when we are in need, he is our provision. Yes, right. He is our source. He's not our resource. He's our source. He declares that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. So what would we rather leave the legacy of with our children? Would we rather give them all the money in the world and have them thinking that, you know, what they call it, popping now? You know, they, they got it, they hot and got it going on and, and all that good stuff. And they headed straight to hell on a jet. Simply because their money has been able to give them everything they want. But now they can't go out. 
Amen. Amen. I often wonder what, what, what the drug dealers are doing around about now because they, they can't really go out like they used to and, 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 and do what they do. And so don't you know there are a lot of cantankerous people in the households right now because they haven't been able to go to the habits that they once had. Amen. They haven't been able to experience. Because see, what happened was they did inherit something that was rich. Amen. But they squandered it. Right? They squandered it, and unlike the, the son that, that went off and his daddy gave him everything he wanted, but he had something to come back to, amen, the prodigal son, he did have something to come back to. Well, you ain't got to always, have, you don't always have a situation where you have something to come back to, amen? So you go out there, you try to figure your way in a, in a direction that's going to lead straight to hell. Why? Because you got so, so... So, what's the word, Sharon? You were so, Jesus. oh my goodness, caught you up. were so caught up, you were so stuck, you were so Stumble. in the mindset of knowing what you thought you had was going to always be there, yeah. and now the stock market has yeah. crashed, and you ain't got jack. Ain't got no right. You don't have nothing. Right. And now you're trying to yeah. figure it out. But here's the thing, and that's why the Bible said it's harder for a rich man to get into the kingdom than it is. Because when your money is working for you, half the time you don't have no reason to want Jesus. I'd rather be like I is than to be worried about what's going to happen. Because even in times like this, your money don't amount to nothing. But if I know the favor of God is on my life and whatever I need, because they say favor ain't fair. Amen. Favor is going to get me everything I need. Amen. Amen. Regardless to what's been happening with the food and all of these things, it's been a shortage of this and a shortage of that. I haven't lost not one pound. Amen. Amen. I would love to lose a little bit of weight. That, that, you, know, you know, well, that's another story. But anyway, it would be nice. You know? But in the midst of where we are right now, I haven't worked in two years because of the injury. Three years. And, and, and yet... God has sustained me. God's word is so. It's not contingent on the stock markets. So we have to begin to leave a legacy on something that this world cannot take away. The, the scripture says, and, and I'm going to paraphrase that, silver and gold have I not, but such is what I do have, which is in Christ Jesus. That is what's going to sustain you. All of these things are going to fade away. It's going to pass away. We're not going to have a thing. And I think we're on that track right now. Yeah. God has given us an opportunity to get our house in order. Yeah. Amen. We have got to put some things in place so that when times get worse, even the legacy for our, our children and our children's children, it will be sustain, sustainable. Why? Because it's the word of God. And you cannot take away the word of God. No. What's in me is in me. Right. Amen. When they take away the Bibles, it's okay. My memory might be bad, but everything I need, God has a way of stirring up the gift. It comes back up. Amen. God has a way that's so sweet. And we have to get back to doing what's necessary to leave our grandchildren with something that's going to be sustainable. Amen. So grandparents, because I... I I, I moved back here from the Washington, D.C. area. And they say in that area, for the most part, parents are afraid to say no to their children now. They, they don't do certain things. And so you got a lot of stuff going on. So if they can't talk to their children, they ain't going to say nothing to their grandchildren. And so you end up with this and this 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 curse amen because in the scripture we have generational curses and generational blessings right. blessings amen and so these people because they turned a double digit with no high school diploma don't have well that's i won't say that but they don't have all of the necessary things to do what it takes to be an adult but they say leave me alone leave me alone i'm grown but you're coming back to my house. Mm. 
you coming back to my house? Amen. How you grow? And then I can't talk to you, and you don't want me to talk to your child either? Okay. All y'all better get up and go. All right, uh, because here's what I believe in, and y'all might, might, you know, think this she's, she's a little harsh, and maybe I am because my mama was harsh, and I survived. Right. Amen. You know, I... I only had one tooth that I don't have in, in the little room back there in the jewelry box. <laughs> Her only one went, went, went missing. I, I survived. But, but, but this is how I believe. Because I, oh, thank you, Jesus. Because my trust is not in man. Right. My trust is in my prayers that have gone up to God. Right. And if he's told me that if I raise them upright, right. that when they grow old, they won't depart. Right. And if they 18 and over... And they've completed high school, and 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 they gonna treat you like you don't matter anymore. Wow. I believe, and this this is my belief, and my belief is not contingent on your belief. Right. Amen, right. amen. And and I, I believe this way. You got to go, right. and you know why you gotta go? Because I know that my prayers will be answered by God. You will be saved. You will be sanctified. You will be filled with the Holy Ghost. You don't have to go back into your mama's womb, says Nicodemus. No, you being born again is a matter of you accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior. And sometimes it takes for us to be pushed over the edge before we are ready. Amen. Charles Stanley say you Amen. sit back and you pray all day long for your children. But as soon as things get ready to get right over to where they are ready to give their lives to the Lord, you tell them, oh, but I don't want to see them hurt. Would you leave that child alone and let God do what God is going to do? He can't do what he needs to do because you keep interfering. It's called past interference. Let God be God. Trust God that he's going to answer your prayers. Because he will. So let him go. Stir up the eagle's nest. You got to go. I'm sorry. You know, it's going to be all right. You're going to survive. And you're going to be able to make it. And I'm not saying that sometimes we don't have to help each other. It's just, it's just the way we should operate. But I'll be doggone it if you're going to disrespect me and what belongs to me. That ain't going to happen. That won't happen, and we have gotten off track by thinking by giving our grandbabies and our children everything they want and making them happy is the way of the West. No. We need to be leaving them an inheritance, a legacy that when all of this is said and done, they are going to be all right. Because even if I live, and I'm going through persecution, it's all good. Amen. If I die, I gain. Glory be to God. Yeah. So that tells me that I don't lose no matter what. So the best thing that I can do is trust God at his word. Amen. Yeah. So what's the way, what's the way that we move forward and leaving a legacy? What does that start with? Number one, investing. Not investing your money. But invest some time, uh -huh. some quality time. Now, you know that the last time you bought Johnny that little fire truck because he act all up in the store, he tore it up the same day. Ooh. And then when he come back to visit you, he said, where my fire truck? Well, you tore it up. But you said you was going to get me another one. All right, all right. No, Johnny. Here's how I'm going to invest in you. I'm going to take the $6 to get you that little plastic fire truck, and we're going to go put it in this bank account here. If you want a monetary legacy, here's how we're going to do this. Okay. We're going to put it in the bank. Okay. And when Johnny has to experience that a few more times, he's going to get the lesson. I said last week that if they say if you, you do something 21 times, you can break a habit. Amen? Well, I think 20 more, 21 times you can form a habit too. By the time Johnny finished going through 21 times and not getting his way, he's going to figure something out. Amen? Even the rats going through the maze after they get shocked for, for so many times, don't they stop? They back up. Why is it that a dumb animal is smarter than God's humans? What is our problem? And we're, we're, we're constantly looking for, okay, God, how are you going to get me out of this?
is. God said, I done already opened up the door. You won't step through. The way has been made. God, the door is open. Wide open. The heavens are open. Glory be to God. The heavens are open. And we're complaining because we haven't done our part. So if we want to invest in Johnny and Susie, do some investing in them that's going to change the way they live. And by the time they get to a place where they really should have some sense, not only are they operating in obedience, but they got a little money in the bank. Yes, yes. Amen. And don't put it in the bank. Put it in the savers and loans. You know, do like them other colored people when they go and they say, oh, you getting a house now? You go to the bank and not that money, that, that $6. You got a lot of $6 in there now. Yeah. So you can go make that a down payment. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. You know? And, and Johnny says, well, how did I get that? Oh, remember that fire truck? <laughs> and I told you that, you know, you. And they, they get it. <laughs> and, and, and they happy. Yeah. They happier. Yeah. Because why? You've invested something that really was going to matter for the rest of their life. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Then we have to be intentional about it. Don't let every time, because children will try to wear you out. I know it. I got four. Yeah. Amen? Yeah, and I only had one that's a humdinger. Yeah. Well, I mean, not my, my oldest boy, that, uh, that boy can make me smile as soon as he walking around. This, this, my oldest son, he's got such charisma on him. This brother, he was in high school. Now, this was a long time ago. You know, this kind of like cell phones weren't just coming out, but it was just to the point where they would let children have cell phones in school. Uh -huh. Well, I didn't give him no cell phone because right. he showed me he, had, he knew how to operate or use a cell phone. Uh -huh. Because you don't call me when I'm on my way to work and ask me what color socks to wear. You ain't got but two colors in there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Put one of each on. But don't call me with a cell phone using up minutes because you want to ask me what color socks to put on. That tells me you ain't learned nothing. So he didn't have a cell phone. So this brother is calling me. Whose phone are you on, son? Oh, this the principal. <laughs> wait, wait. What do you mean, principal? You on the principal's phone, son? I'm Help a sister out here. Why is the principal letting a child use their phone? You the rule maker. Why you letting this child break the rule? And let me say this. It's not for the teachers to teach them the rules. Mm. The real story. It's supposed to start at home. That's right. The teachers can be the enforcer, but they ain't going to touch what you ain't done because life gets messy for them. So we have to watch what we're doing, but we have to be intentional about how we love on them, what we do to make them happy, what's going to really matter in their life, especially again, imagine all of those people that sign their children up for all of those athletic teams and sports and yeah. stuff that they do. Do you really think those people gave them folks their money back when the seasons didn't happen? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> they ain't getting no money back. They said, well, you know, on the line it says non-refundable. Amen. You'd have done better to put it in a bank account somewhere and tell Johnny you're not going to that program no more because, no, bowling is not for Sundays. Amen. We don't play football on Sundays and you miss going to church. Amen. So God said, I'm going to shut it all down. Amen? And they're trying to come back now. And don't you know if, and I'm going to get back on track, if they don't stop trying to push beyond where God is trying to go, it's going to get worse. It ain't getting better. It's going to get worse. So we got to be intentional about what we're doing. And then the first, the, the last thing here, be a big mom and grandpa and praying over our children's children. I said to them earlier today, when my grandbabies come here, or when I'm in Maryland there with them, and we just, you know, doing a little huggy, lovey, dubby thing. Well, when I got those babies in my arm, I'm, I'm praying over them. 
I am asking God for every blessing, every reward, but more importantly, Lord, save my grandbaby. Save them, Lord God. Keep them, Lord God. Lord God, don't just save them, but call them to be servants to your Father. Let them be bold and unashamed, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Let them not be, not be afraid to call out the name of Jesus, Lord God, when they need your Father. That's what I'm doing. And that's what we have to begin to do. We have to begin to love our children, our families enough where we're not afraid to love on them, to pray on them, because that is true love. Yes. When we give them Jesus, that is loving on them like no other love that they could ever receive. Amen? So I always like to leave you with a, a scripture. I was getting ready to say a prescription, but I guess you could use it as a prescription too. This is a uh, prescription, Proverbs chapter 17, verse 6, amen, out of the K King James Version. And it reads, children's children are the crown of old men, and the glory of children are their fathers. If they are supposed to be the crown and the glory, why are they running around with guns? in their pocket why are they running around with their britches up under their butt why are the girls wearing their the top part of their their shirts lower than their skirt we got a problem why are we not calling them on these things and helping them to know right from wrong they are supposed to be the crown God is supposed to be to get the glory. We should get the glory. When my child go out, when your child grow out, they're supposed to be a glory. Somebody see your child. The, the one that I'm telling you about, that older son of mine, I remember we were in a, a, a CVS one time. He was he's about four or five years old, and he had run across this lady trying to get to look at some toys or something, and he came all the way back and said to the lady, I'm sorry. This lady hunted me down in the store in the store and she finally saw him she said he's your son i said yes ma'am she said he is so precious yes. he is so respectful i said thank you and and i didn't have to ask her why because i raised them up i said look i got three boys here I should never have to take out the trash. I should never have to put my own coat on by myself. I should never have to pick up the groceries by myself. Now I do it on occasion, and y'all let them sleep in every now and then. But I shouldn't have to do it. You follow what I'm saying? There are certain things that should be in them that they do. And so I raised up some children that know please and thank you are the words to say. I'm sorry, madam. It's okay to be kind. It's okay to be respectful. Those are the things that we can teach our grandkids is that the long reverend of black amen <laughs> amen and so we have to remember that if we want to send a legacy or leave a legacy of an inheritance that's going to truly be appreciated as grandparents let's bring grandparents back in style and help our young folks that have forgotten that you didn't get here on your own let's help them to know that jesus is a part of what's going on here and if you do right you'll never go left glory Amen. be to god so i thank you all for being 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 kind and listening to me here on today and uh we we just have to remember that as grandparents it is more to making our children happy amen we have to make them the crown jewel of the eyes of the father amen so again happy grandparents day to all of our grandparents we thank god for you i don't know what we would do without you because boy i tell you if i could have my mama one more time because she was really really funny she would tell me she said you know what she said <laughs> i remember when this one here was born i say um you gonna come over and uh and and babysit my, my mother was a diva y'all know some of y'all know she put her, her hand on her hip and she say, my, my baby days are over. Whatever I do, Sharon, it's going to be on my terms. That's what she said. But I guess her terms were to be at my house every day. But it just had to be on her terms, but she was there every day. <laughs> 
and, and that was okay. I understood the language, you know. And now that when, when I surrendered my life to the Lord, she was more apt to work with me. And so I said, thank you, God. I thank you, God, because truly she was an awesome woman of God. And I thank him that he allowed us to praise and to shout together, to enjoy Jesus together before she went on away from here. So God is good, and we want to leave that same kind of legacy. What did I get from my mother? She left me faith. Glory be to God. She said, baby, if it's not here, it ain't happening. Amen. But if you if you can find it in the word of God, you can take it to the bank. Yes. Glory be to God. So I thank God. And that same thing that she gave me, I've given to my children. Yes. And I give to you today. Because God is real. And there is not one thing in his word that he will renege on. Amen. Amen. However, if he needs to do you like I said last week with Hezekiah and add 15 more years onto your life, there is a way to get him to change his mind. Amen? And he will give you that time frame because he just want to see if we're going to come after him versus after doctors. Amen? Glory be to God. So again, thank you all. We give honor. We, we give glory. We ask that you would just continue to be faithful to God. And the next time you thinking about buying that toy gun in the store for them grandbabies, Put $6 in their bank account for them. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Leave them something and, or, or put it away for a piece of land. Because I know when I was little, there was a commercial that said, if you got land, you got money. <laughs> Amen. So try to leave them something that's going to keep their mind focused on who Jesus, Jesus. Christ is. Amen. Because you don't have to travel beyond your mind to have everything you need in Christ Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Glory be to God. So we thank you. We honor you for those that who that, that have not come to know who Christ Jesus is. And you want to be able to have this inheritance or to know that you are saved. And when you close your eyes for the last time that you are going to wake up in the face of the Almighty, all you have to do with a contrite heart, with a heart of sincerity, and just ask Jesus to come into your life. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. Oh, yeah. And you make him Lord over your life glory yes, be to yes. god i am not going to tell you that your life will be peaches and cream and anybody else that would tell you that they are telling you that and it's a lie they want to make you feel happy but you don't get that amen but what you will be is victorious because it is through our trials and our tribulations where we are strengthened all the day long to do what god has called us to do amen. for my brothers and sisters that are backslidden you've done that moonwalk and and you know now uh, that God is married to the backslider. Just go on back. Don't let the devil trick you there by you making go. you think you can't go back to Jesus. Yeah. As long as there's breath in your body, right. you can go back. Glory yes. be to God. Yes. So go on and give Thank your you. life back Amen. to the Lord. Ask him, to, ask him to help you to turn away from that thing that has a stronghold over you. Amen. Glory be to God. And for all my brothers and sisters that are on the fence for praying and, and getting us beyond this place that we're in going out into the harvest to go out there and save souls because yes. COVID-19 does not mean that we don't go out and continue to preach the gospel. Amen. COVID-19 means that we need to be doing it more. Amen. So to God be the glory. We'll continue to pray for you as you continue to pray for us. You can go to Run and Shout Ministries, the number one dot org, and there you can see all of the great things that we are doing. Amen. God bless you. Until next time. I got Jesus. Oh,